Hey everyone, Mark here with CarAudioFabrication.com. So coming at you with the next video in the part of the series for the fiberglass amp rack. So if you haven't seen my previous videos, be sure to check those out where I show you how to make the skeleton, uh, create these different templates, and stretch the fabric. In today's video, we're going to be actually applying the fiberglass resin to our fabric and building it up with strength. So let's get to it. Begin with what you need. First off, you're going to need a dusk mask. The resin gives off some nasty fumes, and you're also going to need gloves and glasses. You're also going to need chip brushes, which are available at the hardware store. You can usually get a package of these in bulk for a lot cheaper. You're also going to need fiberglass chop mat. Uh, note that I said chop mat. You're not going to want to use the woven mat. The chop mat lays down a lot better and it's a lot easier to use. And you're also going to need fiberglass resin. Now in this case, I'm using a readily available product available from the local hardware store, but you can also check out US Composites for much better resin that lays down a lot better. So first of all, you're going to want to pour your resin into a plastic container. I always save spare lunch meat containers. Uh, you can also use cut cheese containers, things like that. But you're going to want to have a rough idea of how much you're measuring out. Next, you need to add the MEKP hardener. Now make sure you actually measure this out as the ratio is on the container. Then you just simply mix the ingredients together. Once you have your resin mixed, you're basically going to just start painting the resin onto your fleece. You're going to want to look for the fleece material to actually be kind of wetting out, where basically the resin is completely soaked through. Ultimately, you're going to do this until the entire fleece surface is covered. Now you can see what I'm doing here is I've taken a heat gun and since it's winter time and it's kind of cold in my garage, I'm just kind of giving the chemical reaction a kickstart. You don't want to overheat the material as it will warp and shrink. You just want to kind of warm it up a little bit. Now if it's summertime or if you live in an area that's warm, go ahead and set this thing outside, uh, park outside in the sun. The sun will help it to cure nice and evenly. Now this is a quick little trick I wanted to teach you guys. Basically, you want to leave your brush in the resin until it's completely hard. What that allows is you can usually actually pull like this shell of dried resin out of the plastic container, allowing you to use the container more than once. We test it just to make sure that it's hard. That's what she said. And then begin sanding. Ultimately, you're going to want to make sure that there's no high spots that will cause bubbles once you start laying down the fiberglass mat. Nice and smooth, you're going to want to start preparing your chop mat. Now what I'm showing you here is I'm basically going to start with making a pile of all the pieces that have a straight edge on them. And the reason that I do this is so that once I start laying the mat on the enclosure and putting resin on it, I have a nice straight edge. It just leads to a lot cleaner um, application of the mat. Piles. One that has straight edges on it, and then another that has no straight edges on it whatsoever. Now we are ready to once again apply more resin. So we go ahead and wet out a nice area of the enclosure. And once we have a nice little area wet out, what we're going to do is take our fiberglass and we're going to lay it on. Now note I'm lining up a straight edge with the straight edge of the enclosure. Now just use the bristles of the brush to wet out the fiberglass. Ultimately you're going to want to do this until the entire enclosure is covered with two to three layers of chop net. So I'm going to let the video play here so you can see a little bit of my technique. Just get a nice section wet out, and I take a piece of the fiberglass and go ahead and lay it on, being sure to be nice and close to the edge of the enclosure there. And then I just go ahead and use the bristles of the brush to push the resin into the fiberglass. Now note that you don't want to overuse your resin. You want to use just enough resin to wet out the fiberglass. So just go ahead and continue this process until the entire closure, like I said, is covered with two to three layers of fiberglass. And then go ahead and let it dry at least overnight, if not for a few days, to make sure you retain the shape. 
Hey guys, so unfortunately I made a mistake somehow and the video didn't record for when I actually originally removed this. But just so you know, um, all I had to do was, because I had all that masking tape, the painter's tape around the perimeter protecting the wood underneath, I didn't have any issues with this sticking really. So I just simply kind of pried it away from the amplifiers and lifted it out. So you can see we have a real nice shell that just fits in here. And obviously I don't have the amps in right now, but the amps would both each be mounted there, and it just covers it up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this surface ready for body filler. I'm going to sand it down a little bit, and uh, we'll go from there.